Hello everyone, this is me today Nuts and wishing you all a very happy new year. Hope you guys are safe and doing well. So today we are just going to start a new series that is OAS Top 10 2021. So first we'll just look at what is OAS Top 10 and what is OAS basically. It's nothing but an open web application security project and it has like, you know, the top 10 application risk identified and documented. So the current version is 2021, which is released last year and pre earlier there was like 2017 version. So now it is nothing but a standard awareness document, which is which can be used by developers for securing their application based on this risk at the start. And also for web application security experts, you know, who can test this particular application, like, you know, the application uh, for these risks. And also it represents the most critical security risks which are present in the web applications, basically the most common or something. And they get the data from surveys or from security experts or something of that sort. And then this is nothing but the first step to make the application secure. So any organization or anywhere you go, they check for OAS top 10 first. If it's implemented, obviously there'll be additional controls and everything or additional vulnerabilities risk and all to be checked. But this is the first thing which most of them use and it's highly recommended. It's not that it's a compulsion that everybody should use this, but it's highly recommended. So now we'll be looking at the 2017 and the 2021 difference, difference between them. So on the left side, you can see the 2017 risk and 2021 on the right side. So this is coming from the OAS official page. And if we go over here, we can see that injection along with cross-site scripting from 2017 is merged into injection itself in position three for 2021. And they think like, you know, obviously cross-site scripting as well should be present in the injection. So it's in position three now. And also there's broken authentication, which has gone from position two to position seven in 2021 in identification and authentication failures. And we do have sensitive data exposure going to cryptographic failures, cryptographic failures, sorry. And it is basically, uh, you know, it in, it's come in position two over here. Obviously it has added some additional things as well, but yes, it's gone over here. And also there is position four XML external entities. It is merged with security misconfiguration and coming to position five in 2021 as security misconfiguration. Then there is broken access control, which we are gonna look at today. It's gone from position five to position one. In broken access control, it stays the same, but it just jumped up five positions. And we do have insecure deserialization going to uh, software and data integrity failures. It's a part of it. Obviously there are some new like additional things over there and new stuff is added. And we do have using components with known vulnerabilities that is vulnerable and outdated components. It's jumped up to, you know, three positions. So number six in 2021, and there is insufficient logging and monitoring, which has gone one position up that is secure logging and monitoring failures. And also there is a new addition that is insecure design position four for 2021. And also we do have position 10 that is server side request forgery. So we'll look into these in like details, not details, basically a high level overview just to understand, you know, I'll just try to make and keep things simple over here so that you guys can understand that way. Because obviously not everyone will be coming from the same technical background or something. So in order to make things easier to understand, I'll just keep it very high level and yeah, so let's just get started with broken access control for now. And okay, over here we do have the list of 2021. So we'll just start with broken access control. So in order to understand what broken access control is, we need to know what access control is in first place. So basically your access control is present in a web application so that the user does actions or requests uh, which are intended or authorized for him. That's it. So there are some permissions set. So that's what, uh, how it can be achieved. And, uh, you know, it can be achieved when access control is applied. Obviously, some technical controls or some measures will be put in place that way. So this is what access control is, keeping the user in check and, you know, performing uh, authorized requests only. 
So the best example over here is when access control will be in place, then you cannot access maybe some other person's, uh, you know, sensitive data or something like you cannot access some other individual's bank account statements or something, right? Financial information. So that's why that's because access control is in place. And what is broken access control? It's nothing but the access control which is in place it's broken or it's not properly implemented or something is missing from there so that's basically you are performing unauthorized requests over there so this can be various types like you know you can access unauthorized data so the best example over here would be that if you and your if you are using your facebook application right and you do have messenger installed for your yourself and you can access the chats and everything for yourself. But what if you have access to your friend's messenger data? That does not work actually ideally, but I'm just saying if you do have access and you can read his chats and everything with his users, whatever chats they are having, if you can read that, that is accessing unauthorized data. So that, uh, you know, that is broken access control and that's what is happening over there. So that uh, there are some access control which are not properly implemented. And that's why you can able, you are able to read others uh, messenger data as well. So now coming next is like modifying and deleting unauthorized data. That's basically you do. Okay. Just consider uh, Facebook, for example, you do have your own profile. You have your friend's profile your profile you upload a picture and you can do multiple things with it you can edit the picture like you can edit some captions or you can even delete the picture if you think oh, it's not so good and i just want to delete it over here you can do that but if your friend uploads a picture ideally uh, obviously you can just view the picture that's it you cannot you know edit the caption or you cannot uh, delete the picture obviously you can comment and stuff but even if, uh, you can just view the picture and even if you can view the picture, it's because he has set some privacy settings so that you can view it. So if you are able to go and delete the pictures over there, okay, and you can edit their captions, that is again modifying or deleting unauthorized data. So that means you're not authorized to do it, but you can do it. It does not work that way in Facebook. I'm just giving an example just to understand how this would take place. That way, this is just an example because obviously most of the guys use Facebook. So, and then it comes to elevation of privilege. So again, over here, it's doing some unauthorized requests. So basically an high privileged user request. So just for example, you are working in an organization or you are in a school or something. So you are um, marking your attendance or your time card or something of that sort. And then later on, it goes to your supervisor. Your supervisor has to approve it. But what if you were able to do those approval actions by yourself? Maybe you add or tamper some data over there and you can just accept and, you know, uh, send the accept flag or something of that sort, uh, accept data or something of that. And then you are able to do that request. That is called elevation of privilege, right? You're doing an uh, access request, which is above your privilege. Okay, so that is what it is. And obviously, a privilege escalation does not always mean that you need to have admin rights or something obviously it can be horizontal vertical and little higher privilege than you as well that way so now we'll just look at an example of broken access control very simple example just to understand and get the things clear so first thing we do have a web application server over here okay we have just considered it as one model because obviously there'll be multiple things like load balancer databases and everything I just want to keep it simple and we do have two users over here that is Alice and Bob. So their data is residing on the server over here. So Alice's data, as you can see, and also Bob's data present below. So now we do have the user Alice and uh, she wants to access her data. So she'll, you know, probably send a request over here after authentication or after logging in into the web application, she can access her data. That's what the intended way is. And also we do have Bob, user Bob over here, and he can also access his data from the web application server. That's how things work when access control are in place. They can access each other's, sorry, they can access the data which is, uh, you know, authorized for them to access. So that is basically Alice accessing Alice's data. So now broken access control will come in place when the user Bob is able to access Alice's data. 
So one thing to keep in mind is this data by design or like, you know, by the application business logic or function, Bob should not be accessing Alice's data, but he is able to access it because of improper access control and that is nothing but broken access control so if bob makes a request to alice's data and he can access her data over here that means that's a clear case example of broken access control so that's why uh, you know this thing has to be fixed and there has to be some security measures put in place so that bob cannot access alice's data so this is what high level overview over here. We'll just look at it, uh, you know, in this uh, dummy exam uh, example, which is present. So there's a exam results web page over here. Okay, it has a login.php web page and a user allies, they have just allies and Bob, they have just given an exam and they got their results. The results are announced. So now they are logging in into the portal to get the results. Okay, so this by a design, the application, you know, the exam results are confidential. So, you know, they don't want other users to look at other users' data or their results, basically. So we do have user allies over here, logging into the application. She enters the username and password, and she's able to log in into the application. And she gets the exam results, you know, right away, with say student details, exam marks, and everything. Obviously, this is a dummy application, and you know, it's uh, all this graphics and all, it's uh, just ignore it. I know it's too uh, uh, amateur like or something. So, over here, the student details mention that the name is Alice. The ID is 12345. Maybe it's a unique identifier. And also there's exam marks over here given and Alice, it seems that uh, she has studied and scored well over here. So over here, there are two key things to see. That is one, the ID, uh, you know, on the URL has a number present over here. That is one, two, three, four, five. So this number is also present below over here in student details ID. That is one, two, three, four, five. So basically it may be like some sort of a roll number or the student number or something for the exam, right? So these two numbers seem to be very common over here. And what we can uh, look at is now the Bob's exam results and everything. So Elias is happy and now we'll look at Bob. So Bob also was part of the exam. He enters his username and password over here to log in into the portal to get his results and he does get his result as well. So as you can see the same similar details because obviously they were like you know it was the same exam and same web application is present obviously the marks will be different. So the student details over here says name Bob with ID 12346 and exam marks you can see over here he's not scored so well but does not matter for bob he's happy he's like okay i passed the examination i'm overjoyed so now he sees the idea over that is one two three four six and also the same thing is seen on top as we saw earlier for allies right one two three four six id is also present on the url over there with the php id is equal to one two three four six so now Bob is a bit curious. He's like, okay, uh, I do, um, I'm friends with Alice and I do know that her, uh, you know, examination ID was one, two, three, four, five. So what if I add that one, two, three, four, five over here in place of one, two, three, four, six. So will I get the exam results of Alice? So he tries that he's inquisitive. So he tries that and he does get Alice's uh result over here that way so as you can see he enters the id that is one two three four five and he gets the details of allies and her marks and everything so this is the one example of broken access control obviously it's like you know a simple example and there obviously uh you can see these things very rarely and maybe in some uh you know amateur applications or something but yes, this is one example. You just enter something ID and uh, you know, you get the data over there that way. So this was it about broken access control. There are multiple other such, uh, you know, examples where you can perform some admin request to delete some objects or restart uh, some application or so run some script or something of that sort. If you know, based on the web application functionality, right? The script as in some web application do have an option to run some script you know, to get some disk uh, utilization or something of that sort that way. 
So this is what it was for uh, broken access control. Keep it simple. And uh, if you guys have any queries, please do ask me in the comments below and do like uh, the video if you found it insightful and do subscribe for more upcoming videos. Thanks a lot and have an amazing day. Take care.